Last week, on the Aviator Show, Reese and Eric flew up to Sidebuster Stolcom just days before EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh. Today is the day, my first time at Oshkosh, got a lot to do, supposedly to get great donuts and maybe some airplanes. Now, it's Eric's first time to enter into the busiest airport in the world. Holy gaggle of airplanes. This week, on the Aviator Show, tag along as Reese tries to not go blind looking at so many different aircraft. Warbirds, Experimental, Mike Patey's Scrappy, this thing, which I think is a Rutan aircraft, and so much more. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Would you look at this? A canard? What's that? Look at this. Would you look at this? It's all right here on the Aviator Show. I, I'm, I'm a little scared. Fuel pressure is good. Fuel caps are on. Hartford traffic, red RV. Take a 2-7, departure to the west. Hartford. Hey, Eric, if you're out there, we're about, uh, I don't know, about 15 miles west of Wisconsin Dells. Got a flight of like five or so of us. Hey, Devin, I'm up just off Hartford, about five miles west. I uh, don't know where the Dells are, but I'm westbound, west-northwest bound, headed your way. Okay, cool, cool. All right, that's him. Really big. You got him? Yeah, okay, we're right outside the jet Conga, guy. Conga yeah, line. Really big jet guy. Where? Right outside the Conga line. Roger. Holy gaggle of airplanes. As now we're about 500 foot below the bases. It's pushing down lower over here. I'm at 2,000 at the bases right here, uh, Eric. What are you saying, Devin? Should we divert now? Should we pull the, the parachute handle? Yeah, actually, yeah. But make sure you're over water, too, so that I can cool off when we hit. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. I'm currently about 40 east of Endeavor, uh, southeast. I'll try to link up with you guys there, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, uh, Eric. There's a lot of traffic right here. Just have to you know, figure it out as we get a little closer. Actually, Jake, uh, you'll be looking for an RV-6. Let him in. Will do. Thanks, Jake. Are we still on track? Pick him up. Uh, yeah. And just an update, uh, Red Mike Merck RV is about 10 minutes out from you guys now. Yeah, they just entered the rear end of the conga line at Endeavor. You get center line, I'll stay left, and uh, that takes right. Got it. See that I lake? You do that. Yep. They're all basically going to be over that lake. They would intercept them there. That's my boys? Yep. That's the flight right there. 413BX. And that they're before the lake, right? Yep. Roger, I think we'll be able to close the gap to you. Close the gap to you here. So I may bump it up just a hair bit to get to the basic with him. Traffic 11 o'clock, slightly high. Oh jeez, there's fighter jets out there. We're six miles away from them. We're going to intercept Keep them. Keep an eye on them. Oh, I got him. I got him in sight. Yep. I got you guys in sight. Uh, coming off your right side now. Traffic, 11 o'clock, 1 mile, 300 feet above. Devin, I'm at your 4 o'clock inbound. Slide in behind us with the other group. Uh, we got three that we're going to be real tight on uh, the north-south runway. Just drop in behind us and uh, welcome to the clutch. Jake, you got the uh, inbound. Yep, he's far in front of me right now, right behind you guys. We're all set. Very good. I got an airplane in front of me and uh, we should be in good shape. And what I'll do, Jake, is I'll, I'll slow down here and let you pass me. I'd rather follow you in than them. Now, what is this guy doing over here? On the all line? the Bluetooth has been off. Um, you know, uh, Thank you, sir. I'm pulling up on Jake. I'll keep it a little bit looser than the other guys ahead. Same. This guy's only doing 80 knots now. He's nowhere near 1,800 feet either, which is kind of frustrating. We're about <laughs> carbides at this speed. These little airplanes are cool. Currently 13 miles away from Oshkosh. Yeah, 2736. This guy has no idea that he's not over the railroad track. Okay, you should definitely listen to the tower though, because you're not going to be part of our flight, Eric. Roger. 20.7, right? Uh, approach 20.7. Central aircraft, Oshkosh is arriving runway 2736. Please become familiar with these procedures and the notice. Endeavor transition is in effect. Rich RB advised flight of seven, currently using 130 decimal 30. All right, flight of three, 118.5, monitor tower, 118.5. 36, additional low wing with the lights and tip lights, rocky wings. Good rock, half a mile southwest of this, continue northeast bound over the railroad tracks to the right downwind runway 27. RV on the east-west road, monitor tower 126.6, the RV directly over fit, 118.5. Welcome to the show. 118.5. Flight of three looking good, guys. Thank you. Welcome to Oshkosh. Turn left in the grass. Follow flight wind parking. Red low wing on the down one. Turn base now. Follow traffic. Keep that base tight all the way around. One continuous right turn. Clear to land on the green dot. Other craft inbound for bit. Fifth, maintain 1,800 until you enter the down one. Then once you get the, to the down one, need a good descent. We're going to have your base turn short inside the numbers. Low wing on the base, continue your right turn coming around. Thank you, clear to land on the green dot. Hail, Dave. Turn right, you're on the runway, turn left. Turn left into the grass, follow plug me to park today. 
Red on the runway, turn left into the grass while flagging in the parking. What's the last guy? <laughs> you did it, dude. <laughs> we did it. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. I like the sign. I love it, dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's the best thing ever, dude. <laughs> right. And uh, welcome to Oshkosh. I think we're in AV, AV New Jersey. It almost looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> if I was a big boy, I could see over the cowling. It sure looks like an aviator. It is got to be an aviator jersey, dude. How crazy would that be? That would be pretty crazy. That is an aviator jersey. He's wearing an aviator jersey. What the heck? Dude, what are the odds? I look at, I see an aviator jersey, I'm like, what? How's it going, man? Look at that guy. Yeah, brother. What's the thing possible? Thank you. I think you guys got the best spot. Name's Carlo Ruggeri. I began my paramotor journey with Midwest PPG, who are affiliates with the Aviator program down in Franklin, Indiana, run by Matt Massey and Dave Halcom. And they are absolutely fantastic instructors. I couldn't have asked for a, a better experience down there in Franklin, Indiana. So for the past four years, I have been flying paramotors. Any chance I get, anytime the weather is good, I fly up and down the, uh, the coast of Lake Michigan, which is a hidden gem in the paramotor world. Not a lot of people fly that coast. It's uh, kind of like a, a secret ocean. We have coastal winds but there's tons of beautiful things to see, uh, including that bluff along Lake Michigan, which is one of my favorite places to fly. I've been volunteering here at Oshkosh for about seven years now with um, a whole group of my best friends, and I just so happened to be waiting there, and I saw your plane, and I was like, oh, oh, I got them. So I took you guys, and I was stoked, and I was so stoked to see that you guys were stoked too. <laughs> I may or may have not given you this spot. <laughs> Oshkosh! <laughs> yes! We have made it to Oshkosh. Everyone is tying down the airplane. Devin flew in at the same time with four or five other RVs. So 50 years of RV, which is the Vans aircraft, this year at Oshkosh. So we're going to see a lot of RVs, a lot of crazy cool airplanes. Join us on my first trip to Oshkosh.
Oshkosh 22 is written in the sky. <coughs> mm. uh, never gonna die, Pat. We're out here. Oh, survived the night. You ready? Hey, no, I'm not ready. Great party last night. You got this, yes, sir. I uh, can't wait to see the show. It's it's officially open. So first step, brush your teeth, take a shower if you want. I'm just gonna put sunscreen on and hit the donut stop. This is the EAA Air Venture, also known as Oshkosh in its shorter form. But EAA Experimental Aircraft Association, as you see behind me, three pavilions simultaneously doing workshops of whether it's riveting, etc. All this is happening right here so that if you're building your own airplane, you can get some better knowledge from people that have done it and gone through the trials and tribulations and learn about the different types of aircraft you're interested in building. So this is this is literally the dream. There's four or five pavilions right now going on simultaneously on information on how to build an aircraft, how to do it safely and responsibly. On my way to get donuts, just thought I had to say, you got about 50 people in each of these pavilions learning how to build an airplane after getting slightly distracted at all the different things to see out here. We've made it to the donut place. Aren't they beautiful donuts to take pictures of? Right. No, because you can't smell them. Right. Well, look at this. Look at this. No, I was going to talk yes. about Thank you. And a beverage for you? Yes, How are those donuts? Oh. 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10. 11.9. I don't know why that's a thing. Like, they're all good. Yeah. <laughs> you put enough sugar Very on good. it. That's right. So far we got about 400 degrees a second at 90 knots. At 90 knots? At 90 knots. <laughs> 400 degrees a second. Just about. We haven't timed it exactly, but the camera shows. I came with the mission to possibly film all the airplanes I passed up, but I'm gonna need a wrist brace because there's just too many. Walking down the main strip now, it was really cool. Mike Patey actually cycled the flaps of Scrappy for us and uh, got to check out the glass cockpit, so that was really neat. So behind us is the Cirrus booth, plenty of people walking everywhere, but let's talk about the weather. It's incredibly cool right now. I'm wearing long pants, and I'm not dying like I would be in Florida. I don't know where Eric and Devin and Pat and all the guys are, but we'll find our way. The grounds at Oshkosh are clean and incredibly large. Just walking around, I was excited to see some of my clients who I've worked for in the past. Horizon Hobbies helps kids' imaginations take flight through radio control cars and airplanes. I definitely remember my first non-powered glider that I could imagine myself flying as a young scout. And just as I finished passing the Horizon Hobbies booth, the next model aircraft from Vans arrived to their booth, the RV-15. The first of its kind and the crowd swarmed around it to catch a sneak peek to the many features packed into this bush plane. After that, I grouped back up with Eric to check out 
some of the experimental aircraft section. We walk past a few of his favorite bush planes as he points out features that he would like to have installed in the kit fox that he's building. Then a pilot demonstrates the capabilities of a single seat turbine helicopter. If only money was no factor, I could definitely see myself having about two of these. A glance at my favorite open cockpit amphibious plane. Also, this Aeropratt is pretty cool. My eyes are definitely starting to hurt. There are just too many dang airplanes to see here, and I totally forgot that I probably should eat. Fortunately, I was invited to a VIP lunch at Hartzell Propeller, courtesy of an aviator alumni, Sean Sadler. We will definitely hear and see from him in some future episodes. But before the day winds down, we hear from a few paramotor pilots on what it's like flying into EAA Air Venture. So all you have to do is just contact the ultralight operator for Oshkosh and let them know about when you're going to fly in. Let them know that you read the NOTAM and uh, there's specific instructions on the flight path and the pattern that you need to take. And then you just fly your paramotor in and everybody's happy to see you. And if you're confident in your skills, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many eyes are on you, just remember what you were taught and, and just have a safe flight and a safe landing and, and you'll make it to the ground safely and it's always an adventure. Hi, my name's Harley, and I just flew 1,900 miles all the way from Sonoma, California to Oshkosh in Wisconsin to AirVenture 22. The high altitude launches at 7,000 feet were definitely the most difficult, and particularly on hot days, creating air density uh, upwards of uh, 10,000 feet. The most memorable flight was the 4.30 a.m. flight uh, departure out of Winnemucca in Nevada. Flew three straight hours, and some of the most incredible topography and beautiful pictures uh, that I got the entire trip it was really fantastic. My flight schedule um, basically was from about uh, 4 a.m. in the morning and typically till about 11, sometimes as late as 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, and then wait till the evening and do uh, at least one more evening flight as soon as I could get airborne. The coolest part about coming into uh, Oshkosh here, the last leg, was I was flying parallel uh, with the route with all the general aviation coming in. So they were all passing me at, you know, 80, 90 knots, and I'm only doing maybe 40 knots, so they're a little faster. And here I am going, and you can see all the lines. In fact, there's a great picture of the ADSB, where you can see all the other general aviation, and then there's one little glider icon of me coming through. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Landing here was fantastic. Uh, Scott, Matt, and Ray uh, literally came right down onto the spot where I landed, and. Uh, got to spray some, uh, I think it was seltzer water, not, no champagne, but uh, so that was a very cool feeling. Overall, everything kind of went to plan and uh, the weather was fantastic, so I was very lucky. It's bittersweet, absolutely bittersweet to be leaving all these amazing airplanes and to go home to Florida, but my favorite airplane at Oshkosh 2022 had to have been the F4U Corsair. Which one? Um, that's hard to say. They're all so pretty. They're so classic. The most unique air show I've ever been to just for the GA. I loved sitting on the flight line, watching all the normal pilots land, seeing the different types of aircraft come in, but to see the 50 ship that flew in with RV Vance aircraft was incredible. But as they say, you come for the airplanes, you stay for the people. I cannot wait to come back. Big shout out to Sean at Herzl Propeller and Jake, the two pilots that we got to hang out with for the majority of the day. They were so awesome to hang out with. So awesome to hear all the different stories from the different interviews with Harley. The strange happening of having Carlo usher us in wearing an aviator jersey. You cannot make that up. It literally felt like family since I started this trip and I feel like I have a home here in Wisconsin. Oshkosh 2022 was different. I got to hang out with all my airplane people. It was totally a, a, a refreshing change from having to do work stuff. I got to hang out with some of those amazing humans between my RV boys and the Stoll crew. It's just awesome, awesome people. Really enjoyed it and uh, 
I wish we were staying longer, but I'm excited to be going home and see my sons and my daughter and my wife, and it's gonna be great, and I'm excited. Next year, more time, more family. Follow me. Okay. In this thing? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Six and a half hours. Wow, that's cozy. It's, uh, we've been snuggling. Let's just put it that but way. But yeah, the show was amazing. Oh man, the, I'm jealous. The flight. I need a backyotomy. <laughs> <laughs> need a what? I need back. <laughs> need a backyotomy. And look, right on time. Oh.